بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Only Allah, where we discuss about matters of tawheed and matters of shirk, things you want to avoid as a list of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and of course, how do we manifest tawheed in our lives. Today, I want to talk about something that should truly scare us all, and that is riya. Now, I want to share with you one of the scariest narrations that you will find in the sunnah. And to truly uh, understand uh, how this should impact us. Look at how this hadith impacted Abu Hurairah. One of the tabi'een, the students of the companions, he came to Abu Hurairah and he asked him, Oh Abu Hurairah, teach me a hadith. And Abu Hurairah decided him to teach him a narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But before he started to speak, Abu Hurairah started crying. And he cried and he cried and he cried. And this tabi'i doesn't know exactly why he's crying. And then after he composed himself, he tried to narrate the hadith again and then tears again overtook him and he started crying again and finally when he was able to share the hadith it was this hadith where the Prophet wasallam said that the first person is going to be punished in the hereafter may Allah protect you and I from punishment will be a type of person and he gave three descriptions one of them was one who memorized the Quran the other was a man who fought in battle and was a martyr and the final one was a wealthy man. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Each one of these men, <clears throat> when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrected them for their account, they were asked, What have you done? And each one of them replied, The first one, I read the Quran, I prayed at night, I read the ayat in prayer, I did it for you, O oh Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, Kadhibt, you are a liar. You are a liar. You did it so that people can say to you, what a good reciter. You are a reciter. You are a qari. And that has been said. So you have absolutely no reward. And because of that, he was pushed into the fire. A man, I want you to think about this, brothers and sisters, a man who spent his life reading Quran, praying at night, and he found his fate in the fire. The second one, was a man who died in battle and then Allah asked him the same question and he said oh Allah I did it for you and Allah said Kadhibt, you're a liar you lied rather you did it so people can comment on your valor your bravery and call you a brave man that's why you did it and he was also put into the fire the final was a man who was wealthy said, yeah Allah I gave charity on your behalf for your sake and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the same thing to him you're a liar you did it so that people can call you generous he was showing off and he was also put into the fire. Now clearly this hadith affected uh, the companion Abu Hurairah to the point where he was crying because he understood how easily we can fall into showing off. Into instead of doing something only for Allah, your intentions get corrupted. This is something we have to be fearful of. We are often praying in public, giving charity in public. We are engaged in good deeds in public often, going to Hajj, going to Umrah. Nowadays, we take pictures and videos of our acts of worship. And you have to constantly check your knee and your intention because you do not know where you're going to end up. And you need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from this. We are in the month of Ramadan. And in the month of Ramadan, we fast. And everyone is fasting, so everyone kind of knows that we are fasting. But one of the ibadat, that help you ensure that you have good intention is hidden acts of worship. So perhaps um, outside of Ramadan, you fast, but you don't tell people that you're fasting is between you and Allah. And my brothers and sisters, a good way to check your intentions and whether you are the kind of person that does acts of worship for Allah alone, or if your intention can get corrupted, is to check how many good deeds do I do that no one knows about? How many hidden acts of worship do I have? Just between you and Allah. Perhaps you give charity on a monthly basis, but no one knows. Perhaps you pray at night, but no one knows. Perhaps you fast and go throughout your day, and no one knows. These are the acts of worship that we have to increase, and we also have to ensure the acts of worship that we do publicly 
are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, we only seek your pleasure and your approval, not the approval and the pleasure of others. Be careful, because when you have riya showing off and this type of insincerity in your act of worship, it can completely destroy it, meaning you will have zero reward. Not alone will you have zero reward, but you may also end up like those men that the Prophet wasallam described. My brothers and sisters, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from this. And remember the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, that which I am the most fearful of you is the hidden shirk. And he said, this is a riyah showing off. This is something that we all have to avoid. This is something that we can easily fall into. May Allah protect you and I and all of the believers from this. May Allah accept our acts of worship. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always allow us to be among those that single him out in all acts of worship. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.